Is this thing on? <clears throat> oh, <clears throat> hi, River City. My name is Charlie Ding. Many of you know my wife, Erin, and our kids, Chandler and Callie. We're all doing fine. We want to send you our love and support for River City. We miss you all like crazy and cannot wait until we're able to gather with you guys again. In the meantime, we've been really encouraged by the Sunday services, the daily prayer, and our kids have been encouraged by the Sunday Kid City meetings. So please keep it up. I was asked to share about the situation in our hospitals and what healthcare workers are facing. There's a lot I want to say, so let me talk really fast. To begin with, I work as an anesthesiologist at Advocate Sherman Hospital, which is a 300-bed community hospital in Elgin, Illinois, about an hour outside of Chicago. I've been working in hospitals for 15 years now, including through the H1N1 pandemic of 2009. I have never seen nor imagined a situation like the one we're all facing today. As of yesterday, there were 20 hospitalized patients with COVID at Sherman and another eight more hospitalized patients awaiting test results. Half of these patients are on ventilators in the intensive care unit, which means that their breathing is so hard they can no longer do it on their own. The youngest patient on a ventilator is in his 40s. At least one patient has died. My job involves putting breathing tubes in these patients when they reach that critical state before their oxygen falls to dangerous levels. As such, I see the sickest of the sick. There are about a thousand healthcare workers in my hospital, not just doctors and nurses, but also respiratory therapists, radiology techs, surgical scrubs, janitorial staff, food service workers, patient care techs, as well as administrators. All of our lives have been deeply impacted by the pandemic. Some of us are on the so-called front lines where we are directly treating these patients, thus coming into contact with the virus itself and exposing us to risk. We think the healthcare workers on the front lines get sicker than the general population due to their repeated and severe exposures to the virus. This is what we are seeing in places like New York City and Italy. Some of us in less involved patient roles, including several friends, have been given unpaid leave, which means they are no longer getting paychecks. For many, this may mean falling behind on their bills and possibly not making rent. Of course, a very stressful situation as well. Most of us have been asked to extend our current roles in order to fulfill the needs of the hospital. This may mean having administrative assistance, screen temperatures of employees and patients walking through the door, dermatologists working in the emergency room, and nurses becoming liaisons between COVID patients and their families, whom they are not allowed to see due to the infection risk. In the time I have left, I will share three encouraging observations and then three prayer requests. The first observation is that even in the midst of unimaginable stress and suffering, God's love and humanity can prevail. Our humanity can prevail. I was brought to tears, which hasn't happened since my wedding, when I heard the story of nurses holding cell phones up to the ears of intubating patients so that they can have the chance to hear from their family. For many, this will be the last time they can hear from them. Little gestures of love and humanity mean so much in times as crazy as this. The second observation is that almost everybody in the healthcare setting has stepped up and answered their calling in some way. I was making rounds in the intensive care unit last night where 10 critically ill COVID patients were located and I was feeling very nervous. But the nurses and doctors there radiated a sense of peace that surprised me. I think many of them are relying on God in a way that is so real and that they are working not just with their own strength, but his. Yes, people are anxious and scared, including myself, some even to tears. But wherever I've seen fear, I've also seen courage. It's like everyone in my hospital have been listening to Pastor Daniel's sermon. Truly amazing. The final observation is that time, at this time, has brought people together. Much like during time of war, people are asked to make shared sacrifices. We find comfort in the fact that we are not alone in our sufferings. We find strength in the fact that our neighbors are facing the same battles that we are. The only way I can come to work some mornings is the knowledge that my brave coworkers are also coming to work. The only way I can last through some shifts is knowing that my colleagues and friends have lasted through theirs. The only way we come through this is together. My three prayer requests are for safety, for help, and for hope. First, safety. Yes, health care workers are still getting sick. PPE supplies are starting to run low and we're not yet at the point of surge. I'm one of the lucky ones. 
that still has access to adequate PPE. Many of my colleagues are not so lucky. Please continue to pray that adequate supplies are coming in time to places where they're needed, and that God will supernaturally protect the healers as only he can. Thank you for the generous offers of PPE that are coming in and those that have already been made. Each PPE can quite literally save a life. So thank you for being lifesavers from the bottom of our hearts. Second, please pray for help. Pray that effective antiviral drugs may be found and that a safe vaccine may be quickly developed. We need our best minds working on this and they can use all of our prayers. Pray for effective social distancing measures to be in place nationally and internationally. It is, it is still our best current defense until a vaccine can be found. Lastly, please pray for hope. Hope that God will get us through this crisis intact. Hope is why many of us keep coming back to the hospital to work these grinding shifts. I still see hope in the eyes of healthcare workers, but we need more. I absolutely think there's hope to be found, even in the middle of hell. I'm seeing bits and pieces of it every day. I do feel the power of all of your prayers, and I thank every one of you for your ongoing battle there. Well, that is it for me. I really do miss all of you, and please stay safe and happy. I cannot wait until I see each and every one of you in person.